Welcome to this week's episode where we have Erin Lindstrom, a sales strategist and coach. She's not just about making money. Erin brings fun and authenticity into the entrepreneurial space. As a comedian, she has a special ability to make complex ideas relatable and engaging. In today's episode, Erin will unveil her unique and varied uses of private podcasting in her business. One in particular that is very unique as it relates to the hiring process. Join us for an episode that's as enlightening as it is entertaining with the one and only Aaron Lindstrom. All right, my friends, another case study episode with one of my besties in business, Aaron Lindstrom. So I had to do the intro and the welcome. Hello, friend. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Yay. We're happy you're here and you have been here literally you might be the OG OG. I've heard, I've been listening to a couple episodes that we've been dropping. You know, a few case study episodes are out. We use that word, people that have been around in using Hello Audio for a long time. But you were like there when Lindsay and Nora were building this. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like boxing you guys. And like, you were some of the first beta people even before not all lifetime license users wanted to dive in before it was like not super bug free. So Erin is the truest of OGs and is also a very good friend. And so I'm so grateful to have her on because when you have a true OG friend and you're out there in the SaaS world doing stuff, she's got my back. And she also was like, I'm going to go all in on this. This seems like a really cool thing. So what we're bringing to you today is going to be somebody who's used this a lot in their business. And so it's going to be another person who can share the many ways that they've been innovating with audio. And yeah, I think you guys are going to like this conversation. Yeah, I'm a pr pretty fun conversation to have. So <laughs> she also does improv, so she can get really exciting. We could just <laughs> tell her to oh, use the word hedgehog in the next paragraph. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a one word suggestion and we can dive into it. Cool. So this idea of private podcasting hasn't always been around. So besides knowing the founder, <laughs> what were you thinking when you're like, Lindsay, what the heck are you building? Where were you like, oh, I could totally see how I can use this in a ton of different ways in my business? Yeah. So I'm someone that I can see things in many different ways, which is both a strength and sometimes someone might call that a weakness. I don't know who, but it can be confusing when you have lots of things that you want to do. So I feel like as soon as I understood what we were doing here, my brain saw a plethora of ways to actually use this in business for both myself and then also with clients that I work with on the marketing side, on the curriculum side. I've used it on the hiring side. I love Hello Audio. <laughs> I'm like, mom, listen to this. And I'll put it in Hello Audio for her to listen to. Yeah. So we have to ask that question then. How many feeds do you have? Oh. Might have to wait a second for you to go well, log I'll in. Pull it up, but I have a lot of feeds. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Do you remember what your first one was? Um, it was probably around shiny sales. Actually, it I think it was. I actually built it out before you could do it yourself inside. Um, and so it was my sales and money mindset course, and it's still up and running. That was in twenty twenty, I believe. But it actually went live. That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still going strong. Yeah, I remember you, I, we probably boxed about it as we do many things. And I remember you being like, I think I'm just going to give it to people. <laughs> and you're like, so and it's just sold, audio. Yeah. Yeah. So I sold this course. Like, I think I charged either $4.97 or $9.97 the first time. I ran the whole thing live. I like did the whole beta test it, get feedback, blah, blah, blah. And then I filmed all of the, all of the modules. And in that process, I was like, well, obviously all of the audios are going on Hello Audio. And so we did that. And then when the pandemic hit, I was kind of like, I could charge for this or I could give everyone this for free, especially in a time where like many people are losing their jobs in this moment. Other people are feeling increased pressure to make more money. So let me give this and then trust that like we'll go somewhere in the rest of the process when it's appropriate. It makes sense. I remember that lead magnet and thinking like first, I mean, I obviously love how creative you are. I love watching everything you do with it. I think when we look at, and especially I think over the years, Lindsay and I have been watching all the unique ways people use Hello Audio. And you're always one of those folks, I think, that are like, yes, this is great. Oh, I never thought about doing it that way. Or I think it's just been a great testament to all the different types of ways. And I love the fact that you experiment with things and I'm excited to hear about all the other ways that you're using it as well. Thanks. Yeah. It's one of those things that when I come in, especially to someone else's business, I immediately see there's so much left on the table that's not being leveraged that 
in my opinion, with Hello Audio, it's like, it, just get it up. You already have everything. It's such an easy way to help make things more accessible. That's a theme, I think, a recurring theme mm-hmm. over the over our course of a couple different of these. Mm-hmm. Start with what you have. Let's not yeah. make it overcomplicated. Start with what you have and just repurpose and leverage, really. That's really awesome. Yeah. 37 is the number. 37. Of- I like it. Nice. <laughs> probably could clean it up a little bit. Why? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, we don't have to get into the nitty gritty. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but I I love that. Cool. So yeah, why don't we dive in and, and talk about maybe some of the top ways that you're that you've used it, if you want? Sure. So when I originally was thinking about like, okay, what's the coolest thing I can tell someone? Like, I think that Hello Audio allows you to give like a very high touch experience while being very hands-off and asynchronous. So when I do have private calls with clients, I will often, that's part of my SOP for new client setup is to create a Hello Audio feed for them. And everything that they need is going to go in there. And it gives me the opportunity to even curate what I'm putting in there. I might have an old training that I want them to listen to. And instead of being like, go into this course, look at module two, lesson three, like, no. And I'm you having me. to admin add them, right? right Not right. even just, like, yeah, it's both. Yeah. I prefer like <laughs> the least amount of barriers for myself and for my client. Like I want them to like, easily find the thing and not have to go on a wild goose chase. So that's how I kind of use that. And I feel like people are so grateful for that, especially with call recordings. I'm someone, I'm actually quite visual is what I've learned over the last couple of years, but I'm never going to go back and watch a video recording personally. If there's something I need to see on the screen, I want to see the slides and I'd like the audio and I will together figure out where I need to go, but I will not go back and watch the video. A lot of my clients are similar to me and like learning styles and what they need to do. So I will set it up for them in the same way I want it. And so far, so good. And of course, they can have access to the full recording video if they want it. But most people are like, no, I'm like, okay. Yeah. And I think what's cool too is if you have clients that you know, you're coaching similar people, but not entirely. So it it can be completely custom meaning like, oh yeah, there's this episode in shiny sales that I created. That's exactly what we talked about on the call. Here's the framework. You don't have to reteach them on the call. You drop it in their feed, but Nora doesn't need it. And she's another client. She needs something else. And then you literally in Hello Audio can select episodes and copy them to other feeds. So we're also talking about (laughs) really easy execution. I think too about... (laughs) I I know Aaron and I are very similar personality, you know, ADHD, all the things. And I mean, I have like eight different things in tech stack, like stuff is everywhere. And so to be able to hand a, a client a specific training or workshop or whatever, again, how do I add someone to member vault and make them not have to pay? Like, it's just such a like admin shit show. And what's, funny is the flip side of that is even if it was easy for me and I had this executive assistant who knew everything where everything was, the client having to log in to all these different places or click on links via email or whatever is not a positive experience either. And so here we are, podcast, it's just the audio. She's the only person or he's the only person who has access. Carry on. <laughs> like, exactly. Let's just do what's easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's allowed me to leverage things that I've created in my business over the years while my business has evolved too. So yeah, Shiny Sales is an example. I've also run a program called Dynamic Coach Training and helps people learn how to facilitate calls better. And for certain clients, they're like, I want that. What an easy bonus where I'm like, absolutely, I'll give you all the recordings and then you can listen and ask me anything on our calls. I can really curate their experience with me without actually changing anything that I'm doing. I'm still only having one call every other week or whatever it is. So I appreciate the flexibility there. And like, Oh, it's just so helpful, I think, to be able to, whereas like in active campaign, I'm like, oh, an automation I don't want anymore. It's dead. <laughs> yes. like, my time is gone, which is fine. You get over it. But it's also nice when it's like, oh, just switch this and drop here and ta-da. But I still get yeah. to use like the power of all the things I created where it's so easy to just create things and then they kind of like, whoa, they're gone forever. So yeah. what you're saying is everyone should have a library of all the things that they've created. I mean, I think I mean... so. Honestly, I think that's one of the big things right now. If we're talking about leveraging your time and energy mm. and like creating the best, both like client experience, but also on the marketing side, like it makes so much sense to have a library of your stuff that you can go back to and use in all different ways. And this is like, one of those for me, one of those tools that it's like, yep, there's a storage situation over here and over there and it, it all works together. 
I'm curious. I know some of our users and some folks that have looked at private podcasts are nervous about their audience and how they'll respond to it, especially if they're maybe not familiar with podcasts or not maybe a, a quote unquote traditional podcast listener. So I'm, I'm wondering what kind of feedback you've received from your clients and folks that you've given private feeds to. Yeah. Have they mentioned anything? No is the quick answer. The longer answer is like in my coaching practice and kind of what I'm talking about in this moment, consulting, everyone's on the internet and speaks the language that we do. And that's why it's very easy for me to be like, oh, you need this thing. And they're like, oh, got it. Thanks. Bye. However, I also coach in other containers. One of them is focused on people who are in product, who have careers and who are advancing or trying to advance in their careers, get new jobs and that sort of thing. They're like not on the, I'm a course creator side of it. You know what I mean? They don't have that kind of starting point. And I asked the person who actually runs that program, if we could create a private um, podcast feed specifically for the mindset calls in there, because there's two types of calls throughout the week. One of them is more like teaching. You do need to see what's happening. But the mindset ones, like, take me on a walk with you, (laughs) right? There's so much there that you could be grabbing. And it's very easy to not prioritize the mindset ones when you feel like you need the information. Um, So bringing that accessibility has been, like, awesome and literally no problems. Actually, to the point where I was like, did anyone get the link? There should be issues. You know what I mean? And there was nothing. And on the other side of that, I also ran a program that was coaching for a nonprofit, helping their tutors learn skills of coaching so that they could bring that um, skill set to their clients too. And these were all, many of them were school teachers or retired teachers. So an older crowd than I, who I typically work with. And same thing there. I sent the link and had that like, uh, is anyone? And luckily I can see that there's downloads and stuff, but truly that one question about how to access. So that has not been an issue for me thus far. Knock on wood. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I have some other weird ways of using it too, if you'd like. Yeah, to let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and I also okay. want to know what's in your brain that you haven't launched yet, because I know there's gold yeah. in there too. So uh-huh. <laughs> great, great, great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So like the weirdest way to me, like probably the one that I don't think anyone else has a feed is I do these like yearly calls with my astrologer and I have a You know of- I have this exact feed, right? Do you? Okay. okay. Yes. Yearly call anyway, with my astrologer. <laughs> If anyone else besides us has this, let us know because we should be friends. Um, And that, like, I also have my mom's, like, your head readings. And so we can listen to each other's and be like, ooh, this, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like a fun connection place for us. The one kind of in that, like, off topic away from business thing that is living in my head is I have had in my mind for a couple of years now, like, I need to get my grandma on the phone and record our conversation and like my uncles and like interview everyone and do a family tree situation and have like an internal family podcast. I think that would be so cool to like get to know people that like, you don't always have time for the heart to heart or you're seeing people at holidays, but like to really get to know them and to form deeper connections. I think that would be so cool. So I love that. yeah, coming soon. We- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've heard that from a couple people. And it, yeah, it's the same thing. Derek's grandma is going to pass pretty soon. And yeah. she wrote a book, though. So that's the thing that was passed in the family. But I'm like, how do we not get her to read it in German, possibly, too, and like do the both languages or something? And it's like, that was a missed boat. And it's even the, <laughs> the creators of Elo Audio aren't even thinking about the ways. Or like, why didn't I document my son's early, like, or our experience? Like, in just a feed because it seems so easy. And I'm just like, yes, I have my phone and I have things. Of course, I'm not here mom shaming myself, but I'm thinking about it. And I was like, that would have been really cool. Like, anywho, the personal side, I think is a thing that people miss a little bit. Like it's always just like business or whatever. And that personal piece can be pretty powerful. And it's definitely not something we really market with, but Everyone knows it deep down. And now I'm sitting here being like, maybe we should lead with it a little more because it is really powerful. That's a thread that like humanity shares where it's just like people's voices, getting it documented, not just video, which is important, but different. And yeah, totally. People say different things, I think, in audio version than they would maybe say being videotaped, right? Yeah. That's one of the ways I plan to use it too in the future. Um, My kid's dad is in the Navy. And so deployment will be a thing once again Mm. at some point. Mm -hmm. So being able to like have them record, whether it's diary entries almost of like, here's what's happening. So we have a bit of a time capsule or just talking to him directly. Like, I love the idea of being able to throw that in and for him to be able to listen when he can. And when there's service, you can download things and having that too. Totally. That's fun. 
Yeah. And then back on the business side, one other way I've used it that I haven't heard anyone else yet, but Lindsay, maybe you've done it because we do all the same things, <laughs> um, but it's actually in my hiring process. And so I've like used this to do a couple of things. Number one is after receiving applications, I've created a specific episode for that person to show that I looked at your application. I looked at your resume. Like, I loved how you answered this and I can start the conversation, but I can do it in five minutes when my kids are asleep instead of like, needing to find the time on my calendar. And then after that, I've used other episodes to describe more like about the business, to have some almost like, follow-up questions that sometimes there's a email me this like in your next email. Other times it's more like, I'd love for you to think about this before we get on our call. Because mm. sometimes I like to ask questions that like are a bit deeper or require more than just the moment's notice during an interview to think about something. So it kind of allows us to start a relationship there where they're learning from me, we're connecting, it feels, oh, she made this for me. And it on the tech side, if you could not get into the podcast, if, if I've worked with this many clients and gave them access and they all figured it out, like if I'm hiring someone who needs a bit of a tech background, that would be a red flag for me of, okay, there's something maybe here I need to look into what's happening. And once they go through this process, it's about, it's a bit meta because they, as I'm explaining my business, hopefully, depending on what I'm hiring them for, they can see the other opportunities or like, a, oh, this is so cool how you do this. I could see how that could work there. And it gives them a chance to kind of like connect dots in front of me, which is really helpful for me to see how they're thinking and what they see. I love that. That's really cool. Do you get feedback from any of the folks about that process? I'm wondering... Because we always talk about how audio is very intimate. It feels like you know somebody. It feels like you had a coffee conversation. And the hiring process just historically is usually like very like, you know, um, what's it called? Like different levels of power. And like, it's just, it doesn't, it never feels super positive on either side. Yeah. Totally. And, and so I could see just like audio <clears throat> that you recorded and that they can listen to on demand wherever neutralizes it a little bit, the situation, and also shows, like you're saying, demonstrates the way you think and like how you, <laughs> like yeah. it's a very like Aaron idea to come up with using it in the hiring process. So someone's like, oh, this is like a unique person that Every they do point. business differently. Yeah. Yeah. It's welcome to my weird Pee Wee Herman. Like, <laughs> well, that's exactly <laughs> how I framed it, but, but true. Yeah. 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 yeah true. Okay. I recently saw Katy Perry perform play in Vegas and mm. that was like Pee Wee's Playhouse inspired. So that's just very much on my mind right now. Got it. But, Got it. You know what I mean? It does bring them into, like, oh, this is different. And like, how do you respond to that? Are you open to it? Are you like, mm. can I just have an email or like, can we just get on the phone? Those are all very valid asks. And it, you may or may not be the right fit for what I'm looking for. Because I, for this role I'm talking about specifically, I needed someone a bit like, dynamic who was willing to get into this kind of thing. So, cool. so far feedback has been good. We shall see. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Just translating what we know works with private podcasting mm -hmm. and being like, oh, bring this now to like pre-hiring too. Like not even, because when Erin first said, we were kind of going through, what are we talking about today? And she's like, yeah, I also use it in hiring. And I'm like, oh, like onboarding. And she's like, no, <laughs> and I was like, right. like, tell me more. And that's that whole piece of like, oh yeah, on the, before they even go through maybe the full process with you, there's an experience and that yeah. is different. Yeah. I think that's cool. And then the onboarding piece of it is a whole nother. <laughs> yeah. Because then you could just drop those episodes or add them to a new feed. That's like yeah. culture and here's how we do things. And, and the typical things you go over with somebody that's new, you know, it's repeatable. Talk about really fine tuning the culture of your company and being able to pass something on and then introing the person like if you're getting big right like to their direct reports or like you know like people maybe that you never talk to because they're in product and you're in whatever and it's like oh head of product this is him here's an intro in a bio episode or whatever that could be like a really yeah. cool way to think about it is like connecting different people in a bigger organization but other than that yeah I've recommended to clients before who do have big teams too, but who care about like connection to create a meet the team private podcast. Mm. And everyone just records like a three minute, like, Hey, this is who I am. This is blah, blah, blah. And so you can listen through and get to know people that way too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. And it's so much easier. Like, cause part of me is like, Oh, you could do that in the loom, you know, or whatever. Like I had somebody send me recently 
responding to my email in Loom, but not actually showing me anything. And I'm like, I know why they did that. It's because it's this accessible tool and it's cool. They didn't have to write a, a really long email about it. I, I listened and it was like a one-off thing. Like her creating a podcast for me probably doesn't really make sense, but that is there, right? And so this idea that when you are building a relationship, when it's mm -hmm. a potential hire and there's steps to the process, there are phases, there are reasons to have like multiple episodes um, and feeds. And there is no visual. That's where I was getting to too. It's right, like Luma right. doesn't really have an audio only, but like it was nice to respond. I mean, the day that audio is like in email, we will rejoice here at Hello Audio. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take, but I mean, come on people. It just seems so obvious that I should be able to press play and hear something, but whatever, that's beside the point. Hopefully this is old information. You're listening to this and we are in that future and we're all happy. But at the moment, audio inside an email, just not a happy thing right now. Womp, womp. But I think that the beautiful thing about an email is that no one's looking at, like, you can't see me writing it. So I can write it while mm. my kid's in bed, you know what I mean? Or, or while mm -hmm. I'm on a walk, I can even type and that might seem unprofessional in another way. For me, that's the thing with the audio too, is like, there are times and spaces that I'll use a loom and like, we're looking at something again. Yes, that makes sense. But there's other functions and like, there's other creative restraints that I have in my life with my priorities that sometimes like video is not an option or it is an option if I want to do it later. But if I'm on a walk and I just want to record something, holding my phone up and recording a, like, that's not going to be YouTube quality anyway. So if I just kind of talk it out, then it's great. I can get this up and out faster. And depending on what I'm working on, a lot of times speed is important. Mm. And I want the flexibility that video doesn't always allow for. So it's nice to have that as an option. I like that. And you don't have to do, have to worry about hair and makeup and all the things. I mean, I, we say that a lot and we kind of joke about it, but it takes the love, like we don't have to think about it then. Instead, yeah. we're actually focused on the content and the intention of why we're recording it, which I think is really powerful. Mm -hmm. I just got interesting audio insight from one of my clients, actually, who we were talking about like, her course. And right now it is audio and she's thinking about doing it video. And she took a moment to reflect on like, why did I do audio again? And she was like, oh, because I was sick. And I knew oh. that I could be helpful and powerful, but I could be more powerful in my voice than my full body and presentation in that moment. So I chose this and I was like, oh, like that's interesting. Like, it's about the, your energetic message that you're sending through. Sometimes audio is more powerful if that's what's available to you. So having the flexibility to actually choose what's happening in your life right now, the kind of place you're in just gives us another way to still move forward, even if those things aren't perfect. And so important in business to be mm -hmm. like, to take action versus Otherwise, hanging up on. There's so many good reasons to not record if mm. it's video. We're having the audio option. Like, what I love about Hello Audio too is that I'm doing the video and I can use it as an audio. You know what I mean? So I'm getting the bang for my buck, it feels like, in my time creating. But then the option is there when, when my options don't work for video in that moment. <laughs> It's funny. We rarely talk. I mean, we talk about it because we know it's a popular use case as supplementing content, but the way you just framed it, we're always like, oh, video is so annoying. But then it's like, I'm also already doing video. <laughs> like, right, right. It's so easy to make a feed. And yeah, it's just important to highlight that flip side because I don't think we tend to highlight it next to the, it's so easy to create. So yeah. I like that because it's true. We've never said like video is dead you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah. And <laughs> audio is easier and for both people. And so it's just, I, what I'm hearing a theme is, and I think it shows up with you too, because you're just like execute, take action. It's so much easier to create that content and just do it really fast and then move on to the next thing and provide that value possibly to just one person. Even still, that's really powerful, especially if they're one-on-one -on -one client, or especially if they're like your high level group coaching or, or course program. And it only takes you that amount of time. And the value on their end tends to be really high. And Nora and I always say the ROI for adding audio to things that you're already selling, you don't even have to upsell it. Just like give it like people appreciate that. Yeah. And I think that goes a little unrecognized. Yes, we're another thing you have to add to your tech stack. But if you think about the effort and the ROI for the person on the other side, not just even your pro productivity, which we've said is like, it goes higher with audio, it really shows the value. And it's so much easier to add that value to your customer. Like, why wouldn't we want right, to right. blow them away? 
Yeah. And that was something we did. Like when we, in, when we rolled out the private podcast feed for those mindset calls I was talking about before, that was like a huge, like, Oh my God, thank you so much in the community where, and for us, it was like, uh-huh, literally. You could have done <laughs> the You're like, there's a direct value. zoom integration. Yeah. It's pretty easy. <laughs> right. But like the actual value for them ad was like, that changes things. Now I can take in another hour per week of working towards this and go back and listen to old ones. And I think we overlook too, sometimes we're thinking about the best ways to teach and paying attention to, you know, visuals sometimes and video and that sort of thing. That is one way, but repetition wise, I think it's easier to consume audio over and over. And while I'm cooking, like if I'm trying to learn something new and wrap my head around something, I'm going to listen more than once, most likely. And I'm not going to do that by opening something and watching it. I'm not going to watch a YouTube video multiple times. I will listen to a podcast episode over or go back to the place I needed to go and hear that part again. So that's helpful too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, repetition is pretty much the main thing that drives learning um, based on a lot of the research of all the different tactics and things and <laughs> that we try to do. It, it yeah. truly is about how much, not only that the learner has to hit play again, but it, it's also the educator repeating themselves. I, I remember teaching that a lot too in the course business, just being like, hey, it's okay that you bring something up <laughs> or you share it again because now they're just hearing it. Even the case study episodes, some of our, our like case studies are saying some of the same things, but the people that are listening right now, maybe Aaron's the one who's driving it home for them of like how easy it is or how important it is for their customer experience. So yeah, I, I'm big on repetition for sure. Speaking of how easy it is, I do have a quick hello audio story from this weekend actually that sure. really didn't even occur to me until right now, but so I am in a season of not really creating content for my business. It's I'm do I'm focused on client work. I have priorities. I have projects. And so sales are good. I don't need to do this right. You know what I mean? It's kind of one of those just like mm -hmm, lower on the list. However, Saturday morning this weekend, I woke up and was like, ah, ideas and like grabbed a giant post-it, wrote a bunch of stuff down and then made pancakes and hung out with my kids. And then they didn't want to be with me anymore. <laughs> and so I like <laughs> came into my office and I was like, okay, what if I just record this? And so I took my like bullet points post-its and I recorded it all and I did do it on video. So I have that, but on the next day I came into my office again and I dumped them all into script, which is what I used to edit. And from there I was like, okay, I can like two things. Number one, I read through the whole thing and I like my content loop situation is I'll go through and highlight everything that can be a reel so that my team can take that and turn it into reels. While I went through, I just edited what I needed to, which was very light. I just took out my ums and stuff. Like, it's okay for me to be imperfect in this. And there were a couple places where I was like, I should have said that. And I recorded it literally right into script because I don't care. I just wanted it to be full. And then I took that and made them their own compositions. And then I was like, okay, I have all these audios now. The video is not ready for what I want it to do, but the audio is ready. And so in an effort of let's just get it up and out and not have more dead content on my computer, I threw it on my public podcast. And I did think for a second, where do I want to put this? It was a choice. And in this moment, I was like, let me just put it out there. So as many people as possible can get this information, knowing that I have the option later to be like, great, taking that series, making it a private thing. But that to me is like the biggest win that I can go from zero to, wow, here's a seven part series on sales strategy that like I did a deep dive because I was like speaking to it and letting myself flow. And I think that flow, we often cut out of our curriculum. And that's why mm. the coaching calls and like those to me are so important because when people give examples and we get to give advice with context, there's so much to pull from there. And I was going to say so much more to pull from, in my opinion, I learn more when we're talking about something specific than here's the general framework. I need to see it applied. And so being able to work through all of that myself and then go ahead and throw it up throw it up <laughs> literally and figuratively yeah. and being able to publish it immediately I'm like great and for I put that in my insta stories and was like I'm working on this here are my post-its want a thing and I asked them do you want a course do you want a podcast or do you want like videos or do you want nothing and I think it was 78% said podcast so I was like bet we'll start there and the videos can be the later part and so and then in my next story I'm like okay and I actually showed a picture of descript and was like I guess this is happening it'll be ready soon. You want me to send you the link when it's ready? And people clicked yes. And so then I had like consent and excitement there. And as soon as it was done, I was like, Hey, you know, but I ended up putting this all on my podcast. Here's the link. Here's the show name. If you want to search for it, 
It's these episodes. Enjoy. And I used AI, I used Cast Magic to create all of the episode overviews. So I have so much from that where like, it's, it's a beautiful situation to be in where I'm like, okay, everyone can access this. They're fully ready to go and like high value. And there's 10 ways I can add to this that I can think of <laughs> when I want to and when there's capacity. Dude, you just, so I thought, like when you started talking, I was like, oh, it's going to be about how she got something out really fast. And it was like how I turned like one brain dump into 10 different things, not only engagement with my audience, polling my audience, building a wait list, a video course and an audio course, reels, hello, (laughs) seriously. And what I love about this is, you know, you and I have been in business Maybe not. I don't, Nora, I forgot when you started. We, we all, you were a little bit before me with your consulting and you left corporate. I don't, yeah. either way, over a, <laughs> yeah. over a decade. So I think Aaron and I are just under a decade. I'm a decade either way, we've been doing, yeah. you're a decade too. You're a little yeah. bit more than me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we've all been doing this a hot second and look at the technology we have now to be able to execute so much faster. Yeah. Yeah. And I know there's someone listening who just started their business and they sit on things like this because not the technology, because we're sitting here saying, well, actually, the technology can make you multiply content really quickly, but it's more like, wait, I'm supposed to email. I'm supposed to like have it in a learning platform. There's That can get very messy. And what I want you to hear is I think business owners who've been doing it for a hot second mixed with the technology we have now are able to remove blockers that we used to have when it was our our early stuff in our early days. And what I want you to hear is most of the time, it's kind of messy. And maybe Aaron sent the wrong link or the real whatever, like, but it also, it's out there. And the big thing is the actual creation of the content, which most people I think have a lot to say and teach the world. And that's the part that they never put out because of all the things that could potentially go wrong. And instead looking at the ability for technology to make it simple. And what that was, I think a, the kernel that makes Hello Audio so powerful is how we can move people past that. It is really easy. It's actually pretty hard to mess up Hello Audio. <laughs> Maybe you don't hit publish and send the link and the podcast isn't there. We get that a lot. But either way, it's really easy to get something out there. And so, yeah, Aaron has a more of a process, you know, like reels for my team, highlighting, whatever. But even still, even if you did a fraction of what she just listed in a weekend, that is game changing from a creator's business perspective. Absolutely. And like, yeah, exactly. For me, having those podcast episodes up and out, that's enough for me. That it feels good, thing. right? It's like my thing is in the hands of the totally. people that need it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and I just like, said the things that I've been thinking about that I needed to share. And now I want feedback on whether or not that's helpful because mm. before I create the thing that's next, which I thought about taking the, the transcripts, I'm like, this is an ebook. Oh, I have an outline that AI gave to me. There's so many things I can execute. And I'm not doing that right this minute, number one, because capacity, but number two, because I want to hear how this lands. Mm. And yeah. then I can do it again with my beautiful outlines that are here and just represent it. I like efficiency. I also like choice. And I feel like that's what I get here is I can go fast. I also don't have to do it all, but I can still get something out. Yeah. If I've learned anything from Aaron. <laughs> I would say doing the things that we like doing usually creates the best thing. And if it feels like pressure or like you're forcing anything. So Erin tapped into maybe her kids not wanting to play with her anymore, (laughs) but even still, you know, tapped into that brain dump and was like action and, and it feels good. Like, yep. And for me too, like, obviously like I'm making sure that I'm prioritizing time with my kids, but there's also ebbs and flows and sometimes they like want to do their own thing. So I'm trying to like respect that too. And Jack walked in here a couple of times. So he's like in the background of some of my videos and like walks over and I can completely pause and have a conversation with him. And I actually really think it's valuable for him to see recording in this way. Mm. Um, Because when I think about, I heard something recently that was like, if you think you have no experience for anything, Think about what your parents or caretakers did. And you actually have knowledge about that subject area. And so if your parents were captains on a ship, (laughs) you might not have ever been a captain, but you probably know a lot about boating that you could bring and actually leverage to get the first job in that thing or 
et cetera. And I like the idea that my kids will have business and marketing and content strategy as one of their kind of silent, I have experience in this, even though I've never done it things. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think as I look like towards the future, I want them to know that. I also, I love his curiosity and I'm like, this is chat GPT. Look what it can do. Not like, oh my God, do your homework because you can't let a robot do it. I'm like, let me show you right now because I think going forward, that's going to be a competitive advantage. So I like the, rather than keeping it totally separate, I like the fact that they can walk in and see what's happening and who knows where that will end up for them and their journeys. But I think this is a good place to allow that to overlap as well. And they could do creative things with this too, if and when they want. Yeah, I agree. For not a lot of money also, right? Right. Which is, you know, broke college kids, we're talking to you. This is something that is a lot more accessible for a lot more people. Yeah. Mm. My kids keep saying they want YouTube channels and I'm like, eh, we can make the videos, but I don't know that's going on YouTube, but like a private podcast, guess what? You know what I mean? There is something (laughs) there where like you could do this and we could, yeah, let people into it. I think it's cool. That's really cool. All right. Now I'm also dying to know if there are any ideas or things that you want to do when you have more capacity or when it's in a new season or maybe off the wall ideas, things you've maybe <laughs> thought about, you know, anything creative, any, I'll take anything because I'm sure it'll be a gem. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. pressure. No yeah. Pressure. So I would say that like most of my content ideas are like, you've heard them and I've shared coming to the personal ones. I think my new way of like, how I can use this as a connector to people has to do with uh, another software called Let's Collect <laughs> that <laughs> that I am founder of. Lindsay might be too. Maybe. I think she is. So inside Let's Collect, I've been thinking about this a lot with we create journeys so that you can show up and nurture leads on social media in a way that isn't automated. So yes, you can do a bunch of automated things. We love automation. And actual connection. That is the one thing that makes us human. So I would like to keep that part of it. And something I've been thinking about really is how can I leverage, obviously I have a million ideas, right? And podcast feeds already. So how can I take what I already have here and wrap around it to create a a communication cadence from there that helps people decide what's next in terms of working with me, if that's something that makes sense for them. And if I know who's saying yes to a certain topic of private podcast feed, that tells me a lot about them and what they're interested in and what we could potentially do together, especially if I'm making that a very direct, like this is for people making 500000 to $1.2 million right now. And we're focused on this problem. Anyone who downloads that is going to be a very highly qualified lead or just a very interested random person. <laughs> but like, for the most part, I can see who's listening to this. And then I can make sure that in a non-creepy, annoying way, I'm showing up genuinely and being like, hey, I hope this was helpful. Or if you have any questions, let me know. And actually get information from them to tell me what to do next in terms of teaching people. And also to start a real conversation about where they are how we could potentially support them, whether that's through more content on this feed or another private podcast feed, or if they're actually set up to be a client. And if we can, if there's an exchange to be made there, what a great way to start a conversation where like you're pre-qualified without filling out a 47 question (laughs) application, you know? Yeah. I think what's cool about this, and we've had a few of the case studies talk about this, is that combination of the super listener score with you know, software like Let's Collect, which is really organizing DMs and organizing conversations. So you know who's interested in what, but you're also replying to who needs to be replied to. And if podcasting is a part of that nurture experience, in Hello Audio, we have the scores of how many feeds someone subscribed to, how many downloads of those feeds, what they've totally listened to. And so if you have a 100 people listening to a certain feed, and there are a certain percentage of those folks have a score of 60 or above, the idea to message them, that's what we suggest to our users that use Hello Audio and use that feature. And we've had a couple people talk about how they use that to increase sales and how private podcasting has had higher conversion rates because they know that information. But when you use a tool like Collect, it now is matching that and giving really a funnel, but is like one way of explaining it. But, you know, a category, a journey is what we say in Collect that someone is going through. And now I can talk with that person that is on that journey in a way that's super positive and like you can help them. Hopefully that's the end goal. So it's really that match of like, 
where a lot of software stop is they give you that information. They say, this is a, a hot lead or this person has downloaded something or whatever. Then it's like, how do you take it to that next level and truly build a relationship? And that's where Let's Collect comes in. Yeah. And depending on the, again, it kind of comes down to capacity and how is your business designed and do you have team? There's some nuance mm -hmm. here to figure out like how to best interact. But on the other side of that too, I think there's an opportunity for people who did sign up and only listen to one thing to reach out to them and be like, Hey, no pressure at all. If you don't have time to like, listen to this, there's an objection there, whether they're saying mm -hmm. it or not, of you didn't hit the mark. I don't have enough time. It's the wrong format for me. And to offer them something different too, which could be Here's the ebook version of this, right? It might be, hey, like I saw that you signed up for this. Totally cool. No pressure at all. You get to kind of show them how you actually coach and interact if that's part of your suite of services. But like, you get to connect in that moment around what's happening and like get rid of the shame and blame and whatever and show them that like, I'm just here to help. I don't actually mm. like, it's all good. And I think that's like an important thing that we miss where it's typically like, all right, what's the urgency? How are we going to make them da, 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 da? And this is like, you know, <laughs> how can you show up neutrally and mm -hmm. remind them that you see them as a person and not just someone who like has to move through this thing. And so I think more and more, we're going to see that like the, I'm not trying to get you to the end goal um, connection, like be more important as it becomes more popular. Totally. So mm -hmm. good. Awesome. All right. For all the people who are listening that haven't yet kind of, have, they haven't dove in, they haven't started or, you know, thought about private podcasts, what advice would you give someone who hasn't explored private podcasts yet? Okay. So if you have a library of stuff that you've already created, don't do anything else. Just like sign up and dump, pick one thing to jump in here and just that's it. Let it take one hour to set everything up and be done and just see how that goes. You don't have to do anything else. For someone who has never created anything before, pick up your phone, get the audio recorder app and introduce yourself. Tell us what you believe. Tell us how you help people. End recording. <laughs> Go in Canva. <laughs> Make one graphic. It can just be a color. It doesn't need to be anything, but like grab a square <laughs> and then go into Hello Audio and put those two things in. And you've just launched your first podcast or private podcast, depending on which direction you want to go in. But like, just go do the thing. That was so good. I'm like, that was a pretty good way to describe just doing the first one. You gave yeah. literally answer these three questions, go into Canva, pull yeah, a square. Just, you know, <laughs> a lot of people I think get stuck and this is like, so the comedy side and the production work and like all of this has weirdly come back full circle for me right now because content is such a thing and podcasts are such a thing and like selling, but in a way that you're teaching, like all of it comes together. And like the beginning of it really is establish yourself as a character. Who mm. are you? And like allow yourself to connect and then we'll go into everything else. But if you even just describe your values, that's going to tell me who you are in your niche anyway. And so it's all, it's all working towards the purpose that you're starting this for. That's good. I bet you're going to have a good answer for this. <laughs> Our closing question. Mm -hmm. Now, again, pressure on. <laughs> but that's what Erin does. She just does pressure on the spot. Closing question. If you had a private podcast of your life ramblings, what would it be called? Oh, that's hard. <laughs> oh. That's like really hard because I think because language is important to me, it's like, a, mm, you're like, it has to be good. <laughs> yeah. I'd pr it'd probably be called Untitled by Aaron Lindstrom. Oh, that's good. I you love it. I mean? I'm like, let's just use that so that we can move forward and I'll name it later. <laughs> TBD. <laughs> yeah. Name Lindstrom. in progress. We yeah, often joke, what would your um, comedy special be called as mm. things come up? But yeah, Untitled feels good for me for right now. <laughs> yeah. Is that also your comedy special? No, I don't know what that is. I don't know. Talk to me. We just got a puppy. I have scrambled egg brain now. I a new oh, brain. cowboy is so cute. He's something. <laughs> he is very Yeah, how's cute. puppy mom going? It's going. It's going. I'm, I feel grateful that I have raised babies like two under two by myself because I'm like prepared for this in a way that my partner who has never had a child or a pet like this before I was like are you sure are you scared like you're not scared enough you should be scared I'm scared are you scared he's like it's fine I'm like that's because you don't know what we're doing you know <laughs> and I've had a baby and you know it's one of those things where people are supposed to be like oh my god yay and I get a little of that but most of what I get is oh yeah get ready and I'm like okay 
I thought I was in a weird boat because people said that to me with my babies, but no, (laughs) it's dogs too. So here we are. I don't think I've ever heard someone flip it and say, I've had kids, therefore I can raise a pet, you know, dog mom first. And I was like, (laughs) I know I I do a lot of things opposite of by accident. Um, But I have told myself a number of times, like so many people have dogs. So many people Mm. have dogs and love them. So many people (laughs) that I know in everyday life, like it's not like the millionaire, billionaire, I can build a business crowd. It's so many people. I should be able to figure this out. So. Yeah. Yep. Well, you have fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> Keep us posted. Yeah. And Aaron does put dog content on Instagram. So if you want to go follow her. I'm trying to decide who I am with that. Like people mm. are asking me for it. I'm like, I'm not this. You're talking to the wrong mm. dog content mom. This isn't me. <laughs> but right before this call, he would not get in his crate. So that is on Instagram, but it'll be passed. Oh, there you it. Well, maybe it'll end up in the archive. Who knows? Maybe he'll have his own page by then. We'll see. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, you're saying you're not a dog mom that's like that, but I bet it's coming. We'll see. All you have to do is make a Canva image. And <laughs> listen, this is a transformative process. I'm becoming a new content creator. You I don't are. know who you're going to be. We'll see. Yeah, we'll check in when this goes live. Where you are now, yeah. <laughs> you're the best. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for sharing all your wisdom, your joy. Folks, go download her stuff. I don't know what she's including. Probably shiny sales now that we've done that. (laughs) We got some. Find me on Instagram. Let's hang out. I don't know. Yeah. Go hang out with Erin. Yeah. So thank you so much for hanging out. And yeah, we'll chat soon. Yay. Thanks for having me. Shimmy and all. And there you have it, audio heads. Another episode of Laundry Private Podcast is in the books. I hope you're leaving today feeling even more ready to amplify your voice and connect with your audience in meaningful ways. The adventure continues in our next episode with even more insights, strategies, and inspiration to help you along your own private podcasting journey. Of course, make sure to check out helloaudio.fm to start your own private podcast. And remember, you've got amazing content that needs to be heard. So let's turn the volume up. Until next time. Thank you.